olive trees. Sometimes I go, who is this great evangelist? My pastor. Can only, the only one that can be right in the world is my pastor. The, the church I go to. He said, get your eyes off the olive trees and get them on his spirit. Amen. Not by might, not by power, certainly not by the flesh. Amen. But by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. 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 One thing, your pastor's not going to be with you when you stand in front of Jesus in heaven. Amen. When you're in front of that judgment seat or in the great white throne, <laughs> And he's looking straight down through you. You can't say, well, Daryl told me this. <laughs> it was my mom and daddy's fault. Well, brother so-and-so told me it meant this, Lord. You are the one that's going to have to say, oh, Jesus says, who do men say that I am? What did you do with Jesus? Mm -hmm. It's going to be you. Don't get your eyes on God. See, he don't even explain this shit. He goes right through here, through here and does, does not explain the olive trees. I thought that was curious. And then he said, look, not by might, not by power by my spirit. Keep your eyes on me. Watch this. Verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You shall become a plain and shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings crying, Grace, grace unto it. Now what could that be? Being Zerubbabel is type and symbol of the body of Christ. Sometimes troubles come up in our life. Sometimes troubles come up in our churches. Sometimes trouble comes up in our family and it looks like a mountain. And he's saying, who is this old mountain before the body of Christ? <laughs> Will it not be hewed down and it become a plain? There is nothing. There's nothing that Jesus can't do. Amen? Amen. What does he say here? Jesus tells us, Matthew 21, 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast unto the sea, it shall be done. Praise God. That means those problems that you've been having, those things that come towards you trying to get you to fall back, trying to get you to try to divide the body, that stuff's going to be huge. Damn. That mountain's going to disappear. How many got mountains in your life? That's a good word right here. But what's this headstone, Daryl? That is the body of Christ bringing forth the cornerstone, the capstone, Jesus Christ. He's the capstone and cornerstone of our salvation. And by our proclaiming Jesus, we bring this forth and nothing will hinder that. Nothing will stop that, praise God. They'll try, but like you said, that mountain will be disappeared. That mountain will be hewed down. It will become a plane before you. You'll bring down. Praise God. You will bring forth the headstone. You will bring forth Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's where it's at. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says we are saved by what? Grace. Through faith. Saved by grace because it says grace, grace unto it. Many people come against the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the heathens out there. I'm not talking about the unbelievers. I'm talking about those in their own mind in a church come against Christ and Him crucified. <clears throat> and they point to other methods and other ways for deliverance, other ways for salvation, other ways for victory. When it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified, you can look at 1 Corinthians 1.18. He is the power and the wisdom and the fullness of God, Colossians says. Amen. Amen. And even though people will come against that, they will not prevail. Because He said, who is this mountain before Zerubbabel? The body of Christ in this end time is going to have power. It's going to have victory. And yes, some of us may be persecuted because it's coming to the United States people. Whether you see it or not, some of us have our head in the sand. We don't see what's going on. But you can see them ripping freedoms out of the Constitution right now so they can set up the Antichrist system and persecute Christians and Jews. It's there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me go ahead and explain who the two olive trees are before I go on. I might forget this thing. <laughs> two olive trees always been curious, people curious about this because in Revelation chapter 11 there are two witnesses. Two witnesses in the end time. And they will come and many people believe it's Elijah and Enoch and I also do too. Two physical witnesses. The Bible says and when they proclaim the gospel no one will be able to stop them. Fire will proceed out of their mouth to burn up their adversaries. Everybody says, well, that can't be Jesus. I mean, Jesus is love. He wouldn't do nothing like that. These witnesses will be of God. Hello? Amen. I, 
Enoch and Elijah are the only two in the Bible that did not die. It's appointed for all men to die once. Then the judgment. So they will be killed after three and a half years. Antichrist will have the power to kill them, and God will raise them from the dead three days later. Those are the physical two witnesses that will come. But how many know that things happen spiritually before they take place physically? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a spiritual two witnesses that's coming forth. And I believe it's coming forth very soon. And that's why I'm telling you this. The spiritual is the engrafted into the olive tree, which is the church. You have the physical Israel and you have the spiritual Israel. The spiritual Israel is the church that was grafted in. Let me go and show you this in Romans. Romans 11, 24. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, which is Israel, that's one olive tree, be grafted into their own olive tree? We were grafted in. So you're going to have the 144,000 witnesses at the end that will be one of those olive trees that is anointed with the seven Fold operations and complete power of God's Spirit, and you'll have the body of Christ, amen, amen, that's been grafted into that olive tree that will stand forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ that many thousands and millions may be saved. Amen. amen. Those are the two olive trees that's going to be full of the Holy Spirit. Next, to, on each side of that bowl, which stands for the Holy Spirit, and there's pipe and perpetual burning coming up, and that oil, that oil will continue to flow. Y'all, I'm telling you. When the Lord's Spirit flows through you and He uses you, have you ever prayed for somebody? Has He ever given you a revelation as you're reading the Word? Mm -hmm. Did you feel that energy go through you? Did you feel that electrical, powerful energy and that love flow through you? That is that perpetual burning. That is that olive oil that stands for the Holy Ghost <coughs> who's flowing through you. It will never stop. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. Your shadow will heal. Peter didn't even know it. I guarantee you he didn't know it, but he walked by and his shadow healed because he had the perpetual flow of what? Holy Spirit. Oh, praise God. The seven lamps. All this is around the Holy Spirit. Not by might, not by our programs, not by our psychology, not by our own thoughts, but by his Spirit. Amen. He's given us his Holy Spirit for everything pertaining to life and godliness. And it comes through faith in Christ and being crucified. Ooh, praise God, we're going to need this. Amen. I feel the Holy Spirit. I'm, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. N number eight, verse eight. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of his house. His hand shall also finish it. And, sh and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. This is that foundation which is going to be Christ and Him crucified. The body of Christ will not sway from it in the end. That remnant that God's putting together, that one accord that God's putting together like He did in the early church where the cloven tongues of fire came down, the mighty rushing wind, praise God, and they all spoke in tongues. They won't split up from one another and start preaching other things. They'll lay that foundation, which is that cornerstone, that capstone, which is the cross of Christ. That's where it all took place. There ain't going to be people preaching this over here, preaching that over there. We will be in one accord, amen. 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 The Word of God tells us we need to be that way.